Uh, the understanding is that the mayor of the city of Johannesburg is addressing at this time, so let's quickly take you to that link. Because it was an NGO that dealt specifically with displaced women. Um, however, due to unforeseen circumstances, the building ended up serving a different purpose. So we are here with Human Settlement, EMS, in the form of the MMC of uh, Public Safety, to respond. So, Mr. Mayor, are you confirming that this wait, building wait, was wait. hijacked? Wait, 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 wait. Order, please. So Very before nice you start with the questions, I will give to the MEC to speak to the issue of settlement. Yeah, no, no, thank you very much. Uh, you are anxious about hijacking. Uh, they will answer you. But I think, uh, firstly, we must convey our condolences to the um, families who have lost their loved ones. And as the mayor has said, this is a tragedy of uh, monumental proportions. And it's unfortunate that today, we are here, uh, and this for us demonstrates a chronic uh, problem uh, of housing in our province. As we have previously said, that there's at least 1.2 million people who need um, uh, housing in our province. We have uh, also had discussions with the mayor and the MMCs about... Uh, buildings that might or rather hijack buildings. Um, the city through its uh, NTT Joshua knows of the buildings that they own, about 23 of those which will need to be developed but they also know of uh, about 100 buildings that might not have uh, owners and we have agreed that we need to have an intergovernmental, yeah. comprehensive, integrated uh, 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 approach of dealing with this so that uh, we don't have to come back uh, uh, in future dealing with um, a tragedy uh, of these uh, proportions. As the provincial government, we will also be working with the city. My colleague, MEC for Social Development and Agriculture, Mbaliso Pesia as well, there will be uh, an intergovernmental, uh, and the MMC for Social Development is here uh, uh, in the city, so there will be social relief. We have already identified three buildings that the surviving um, victims will be uh, allocated to and we have agreed that we are not going to um, uh, deal with people on the basis of their nationality. Yes. At this point, yeah. anybody who is uh, affected, we are going to give humanitarian um, uh, 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 assistance. So that question must not even arise, whether people are South African or not. At this point, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is a tra tragedy that affects uh, uh, people irrespective of their nationality. So we have agreed that we are going to uh, deal with that. There are other issues which would like the media to be sensitive because at this point we are dealing with a tragedy and we must focus on the uh, intervention that the emergency agencies, the police, uh, Department of Health and all other authorities are uh, dispensing. There will be a properly arranged uh, press conference that will probably have the city, probably the premier and the, and, the, and the mayor to deal with the issues in detail of uh, human settlement, informal settlement, issues of urbanization, issues of funding for infrastructure, because those issues have always been on the agenda. And it's not like they have not been attended to by uh, the three spheres of government. So at this point we thought it would be important to uh, inform society that something is being done and uh, uh, how many people are affected and what is it that the government will be doing. So we will take questions but we would like to ask you uh, to take into consideration the fact that uh, uh, there will be a properly arranged press conference 
hopefully in the next two days or three days, uh, Mayor, uh, the province and the, and the city to deal with all the different aspects. Because the MMC of uh, safety was also briefing us of the work that they have done and the successes that they have made. And we would want to take the media as well so that there is no impression created that there is, there is no work done by the city and by the province. But we would not want to use this uh, occasion to do that. Today we want to convey our condolences and we want to uh, assure society that we are uh, attending to uh, this uh, crisis and this tragedy. And we will be from here going to the hospitals to visit the surviving uh, victims. Thank you. Thank you. And you will be number one. Just be short and brief. But if your question is covered, don't repeat it. Né? Just be short and brief because you are too many. Perhaps I missed the mayor talking about it. Uh, Alpha from Iowa News. Yes. Mr. Mayor, we've had this issue of illegal buildings for quite some time. In fact, when Kenny Kunene was acting mayor, uh, you know, he landed in the wrong books of many people. Uh, evicting people. Yes. What exactly is stopping the city from you know, implementing efforts to tackle this, uh, this crisis? What is preventing the city from implementing its efforts to preventing this nation? And you're talking about evictions in particular. Just illegal, illegal, the op illegal occupation of buildings. Illegal occupations. Look, um, we, we are making strides, right? Um, my MMC of public safety is here. I'll give you just a short briefing. Because what we have done in the past, we, we, we may have contravened certain um, laws in terms of providing alternative uh, accommodation in particular. And you would understand that there are quite a number of uh, non-profit organizations that have a keen interest on the city's approach towards evicting buildings. So as, as this current administration, we are taking a more prudent approach and we are not going there with brute force. We are trying to apply a, a, a maximum uh, sensitive strategy. That's why uh, the MEC, uh, as well as the Minister of Human Settlement, we had a conversation and they were alluding to the fact that, Mayor, you have quite a number of buildings that we can, as intergovernmental relations, we can activate in terms of providing alternative and social housing uh, because many of the city employees themselves are looking for the same access that we have to create. So the issue of how the government used to evict people and how we are going to implement the strategy of, I don't want to say evicting, but providing alternative accommodation so that we can repurpose these buildings for um, this kind of social housing is what we are particularly dealing with. And just to give you a brief highlight, um, tomorrow, it's just unfortunate that today's council and we had uh, this unfortunate and tragic, tragic event. I have set up a sub mayoral committee that is focused on the inner city in particular, the re establishment and repurposing of these buildings that are here, and a very um, like I said, humanitarian approach on how we treat the citizens in the city of Johannesburg because you have to take into account it's not only those that find themselves in dilapidated buildings but those that are um, on the streets as well of which we have shelters that they are unwilling to occupy at this point but the shelters are there fully functional so um, the element of how we enforce our bylaws is an issue that the MMC of public safety is very passionate about and most of the time I, I need to remind him of our competency as local government so that we do not find ourselves in a situation where we are contravening um, certain laws in us trying to deliver to a discomfort yeah. that the country has because this is not just our problem as government. No. It's a collective problem because the people are occupying these buildings sure. are our citizens. Mm. So if we cannot... Um, be considerate of the fact that our attempts are to also assist them in relocation and to also restore our city to its former glory for lack of a better analogy. Um, we will not get anywhere, so we need to unite and we need to understand and join in a common purpose. The press briefing that the MEC had alluded to is where we will give you critical pointers of what our area of focus is going to be 
in the form of this submineral community that is focused on the redevelopment of the inner city in the city of Johannesburg. I hope I've covered your answer, colleague. Uh, yeah, and, and maybe just to add a very critical issue, Mayor. There are cartels who prey on poor, vulnerable people because some of these buildings, if not uh, most of them, are actually in the hands of those cartels who collect rental from our people. And that makes a point that uh, some of these people who are in these buildings can afford to pay. Yes. Therefore, government must create a stock for rental because that is uh, affordable. Yes. That's why our collaboration with the city and entities like Josco is to ensure that we make uh, that stock available. Just uh, last week, Friday, we were launching a program uh, for rental stock in Riverside with the minister and the mayor uh, as part of the work that we are continuing to do. So it's not like we are not doing anything. It's not like we are saying we must still. We are already doing that work. So that should add that. Make a question. Order, please. Order. It's a decision. Okay, just take it. Yeah, but the police are here, and and the police uh, must uh, people must report people must report, and then the police you would have seen someone was talking about uh, uh, one of the MMCs who was acting on that day he was with the police, so it's not like the police are not doing anything. The, the question is whether they are doing enough or not, and I think they are competent to answer for themselves so that uh, you don't want to uh, me to, to, to attack the police unjustifiably without any, any facts. But from where I'm sitting, I know they are doing their level best. Whether their level best is enough, that's a question which uh, we would have to engage them on. Yes, SAPC. Yes, Mr. Tinabori. Uh, my colleague uh, Alden just spoke with Terry just now, yes. and uh, they claim that this building is still owned by the city and yes. that they have not abandoned it. Can you get a response to that? Uh, you know, the allegations was that they are uh, the, the NGO that was uh, in charge of this building uh, for abandoned buildings. Yes. Okay, so I think I think uh, it's a it's a misrepresentation because I think Terry is an organization that deals with human rights in particular. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, so I, I don't think um, the, the question was proper. But what I can confirm, as a matter of fact, is that the building does belong to the city. It was not sold. It was leased to an NGO to, to in fact, run the, the non-profit organization to house uh, women that, that needed to be... Um, to be given relief of some sort, yes. And that's when things escalated out of control, because remember, when the city leases a building, um, whoever is, is taking responsibility needs to make sure uh, that the building is well kept, um, that they can return it to the city in a condition in which they found it in. But I cannot be able to, to project and predict how a business would then find itself in a situation where it's abandoning. Uh, its operation for one reason or the other. So that's where we are right now as the city is. Yes. Oh, that's the last question. Okay, so I'll answer to one of your questions, right? Yes, it is owned by the city. You are correct. Um, the second question you said, is it not the city's responsibility to do its maintenance? To check on the building. Look, the, the, the building, the, the city, through other departments, did check. Uh, EMS, EMS did check. So there's one building, and unfortunately we started, what is it called? The one that we recovered, we started with that one before we could come back to this. Um, it was the one at, at the Venin Court and the Casamias. 
So let me let me allow the the, M, the MMC of public safety yeah. to tell you about what we wait wait. It's not a dialogue. Yeah. The MMC of finance um, of public safety is underway with a program of seizing some of the buildings that have been reported or that is suspected that they have been hijacked. This is one of the yes. buildings that the committee was supposed to have been dealing with. So it's unfortunate that they were overtaken by events. Yes. I want the MMC... People have died. They have died. And it's a tragedy. And it's not for me and you to debate about the fact that people no, have lost their lives. No, sorry, Mayor, wait, ask, wait, wait. Wait, no, but wait. Heidi, wait, wait. On, wait. Yeah. How many questions have you been asking, Heidi? Because you're not answering the question. Which is what? Which oh. is, is it not the responsibility of the city mm -hmm. to check on this building? It's been hijacked. There's informal settlements inside the building. 73 people have died. And you're telling me that it was leased out. And it's unfortunate. No, but the city has been doing the its people. work. They've done the check. Yeah. I told you, Heidi, Heidi, Heidi. The city, when it came in, did this government. They've done their checks and their rates. As the mayor said, we have closed them. A success has is actually happened right now at the metro building at Hilbro. Through the intervention of all the stakeholders, even EMS and everyone other buildings, that building we managed to seize it from the people. So that, may, that you know, the program there is with the mayor and the CM. They are actually there. That's why I'm saying that, and the mayor is saying, the leadership. It's unfortunate that this is actually, you know, this actually has happened here. But another thing is that all the NGOs that are there, the city and them, can they please come to the party? Because they're litigating. They said that they are going to arrest us. Because we're telling them that let's close these buildings. Because there's a lot of fire that is happening. There's no electricity. There is no, uh, you know, uh, so they need to be closed. But what they do, they go to court. And I said, come to the party, let's sit together. With the MMC Leach was there. We did, we did an audit at the Casamia. That's why we, we know that currently that the people who are staying there can afford. And I said, that, why are you not going? We have, we have a proof. Then in court, we did that with the MMC Leach and the leadership here. But you know what happens? Siri and the lawyers, they are litigating us. We are always in court and said, let us come together and sit and talk. But what we did with the strategy that the, the mayor and the CM have actually came up with, we managed to implement that at the metro center building. We, we, we said we called everyone in and we checked. We said, listen, we can't move all of you. We're going to do it piece by piece, floor by floor. It happened there. So it, it, it's actually happening, but very slow. But we said... Instead of us now, leadership, of blaming each other, right now, there is a plan in place. And the press conference, it will come, mm. and the leadership of promise will come in, we'll tell you what you have done, and the successes that you've done, and the frustrations. It's really, really sad for us, this actually had to come to actually this. There are many of them, we know, but we are doing something. One, you know, we, we've actually done it, and, and we said there are that, that, we've seen all of them, we've done the, the checks, we have reports from the EMS, from every GFITS, they've been working day in, day out, but they are, instead of them being able to take people out, they are taken to court every time. Thank you. Yeah, okay. maybe, yeah, no, no, yeah, hang on, yeah, maybe, uh, Heidi, maybe I must say this, because uh, the province is a competence authority for human settlement, and we have delegated that function to the city. So that's a very important uh, point. The second thing is, the mayor and the MMCs and ourselves in the discussion we had, we have agreed that we are not going to defend anyone. If there's an official of the city who will be found to have contravened or who... To, to, to have neglected their responsibilities, heads will definitely roll. And that's why we are saying now to you, Heidi, that we are going to have a proper sit-down with the media and deal in details, because I've just said now, there's about 23 buildings that the Johannesburg Housing Company owns, and they are, they are like this, and they have a plan for that, they don't have money for there's about 100 buildings that are owned by the private sector and they are neglected. So we have to 
um, be decisive in how we deal with that. And one of the things might be to expropriate those buildings so that we can be able to house uh, uh, people. As you know, housing is a big problem in our province, not just uh, in this city. So we would not want to create an impression that we are perfect, we have solutions to all the problems, and that there are no problems. Hence, we always say we are prepared to engage with you as the media, and whatever limited resources at our disposal must be utilized uh, efficiently and impactfully. So I would uh, uh, ask that uh, we give the city that space to be able to come back yes. and uh, respond. They will uh, give um, uh, responses to the public. They know we are all accountable. We have no choice. It is our responsibility as elected uh, officials in, in these uh, two spheres of government. Are you telling me that it is not so to take to taking rent from these people? Then why why is something not being done to arrest them? If you say you know that it has been done, forensics has been done. Yeah, but you are asking a question that was asked by this gentleman. That's the problem. Okay, it's fine. Now I understand. Yeah, I, I, I said, I didn't say 30 buildings like that. I said 23, one. So that's the first thing. Those are owned by Johannesburg, the city. They own them. It's their building. They know about them, their state and, and their whereabouts. And they are doing something about them. The reason why we will be able to relocate some of the affected people to the next three buildings is because the city has been doing work and is doing work on all these buildings. So there is three buildings that are already uh, available to house the affected victims. So if the city was not doing work at all, the city wouldn't have that. So you need to give that to the city. I'm not the spokesperson of the city. Uh, so that's the second point. The third point. The, 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 the cartels and the criminals mm. and uh, syndicates that are there, they are there. It's a fact. They are responsible for uh, illegal uh, 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 occupation of land, illegal op occupation of buildings, illegal. And the police have um, reacted on several occasions. There has been uh, uh, operations by the city, um, what is it, uh, JMPD, and the police. So it's not like nothing is not uh, happening. Maybe whatever that's happening, it's not enough. And I said because I'm not the police officer or an enforcement uh, uh, officer. That's why I said that question will have to be addressed by the police. I'm responsible for human settlement. In the What has transpired and what are we doing now to address the, the, the immediate, because there's an immediate issue of people who are um, uh, what is the, uh, displaced. So we are dealing with that issue. And we said we will have a press conference, the city and the province, in the next two days or so, to deal with these issues comprehensively, issues of uh, uh, housing, issues of infrastructure, of informal settlement and all that. Yeah, thank you very much. That was the last question. All right, so that's the MEC of Human Settlements in Gauteng, Lebohang Maile, addressing alongside the mayor of the city of Johannesburg, Kabelo Kwamanda, and uh, you also had the MMC of uh, Community Safety in the city of Johannesburg, Mzoni Chwago. And uh, just an update on what we have heard so far uh, from that media briefing. A very good morning to you, by the way, if you are just joining us. This is a special broadcast of Newsfeed AM. We're coming to you live from inner city Johannesburg, and uh, it is um, the Marshalltown area. So what we know so far is that the name of this building, where a number of people have died, by the way, that figure has risen and we currently stand at 73 people who have died, 52 others have been injured and there are some of those that have been taken to nearby hospitals. So the building itself, the name of the building is Usindiso Homeless Shelter. 
it is owned by the city of Johannesburg. That admission being made coming out of that media briefing that we have just heard. And it was leased to a non-governmental organization. It was leased to an NGO. Who is that NGO? Well, we don't know. But so far this morning, we have been telling you that these buildings uh, or uh, this particular building is hijacked. Perhaps that may not be the narrative now, given what we have just heard.